one of the few journalists to interview serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer has revealed the Milwaukee monster ate his victims' bodies because he wanted them to be part of him. Emmy-winning producer Nancy Glass, who interviewed Dahmer in 1993 for CNN's Inside Edition, spoke to Australian radio show Kyle and Jackie O on Wednesday about her time with the murderer, who is the subject of Netflix smash hit Monster. Ms. Glass revealed, he said he chose to eat them because he wanted them to be part of him. He was so desperate, so desperately lonely, so ashamed of being gay. The journalist also revealed that, surprisingly, Dahmer seemed completely normal despite his sickening crimes and troubled childhood. She revealed that she got to know desperately lonely Dahmer's family before she started corresponding with him, which led to her discovering why he killed 17 young men and boys, while eating some of their corpses, between 1978 and 1991. Ms. Glass said Dahmer had bonding issues stemming from the fact his mother Joyce Flint wouldn't allow anyone to touch him after he was born, except to change his diaper. He became obsessed with the idea of people leaving him, and in his twisted mind, he believed that eating his victims meant they would be with him forever. ARN Privacy Policy When asked by radio host Jackie O. Henderson if she ever felt empathy for Dahmer during their correspondence or prison interviews, Ms. Glass said no. She always kept a professional distance from Dahmer and withheld judgment, she explained, but this was no different to how she would interview any public figure. You guys interview how many people? And basically I'm the same as you. You go at it from a very professional standpoint, Ms. Glass said. When you're you're interviewing a politician. You're careful, right? You don't judge. But ask the question so that everybody listening can judge, and that was my job. Ms. Glass also spoke of how she got to know his family before she eventually met Dahmer in prison. I was involved with the family for several years. And the father, Lionel Dahmer, never thought anything was wrong, with Jeffrey. He never noticed it, she said. After being granted permission by Dahmer's family to write to him in prison, he wrote back to me, and then we started to talk. The super scary part, was, he seemed perfectly normal. That's terrifying, she added. It was odd. I mean, you can hear the way Hess talking to me is very thoughtful. He contemplated, but Hess a psychopath. He says to me, I'm sorry for what I did. But Hess a psychopath. He doesn't even know what those words mean. Miss Glass also revealed that Dahmer's mother, who died in the year 2000, was taking a cocktail of 17 prescription medications when she was pregnant with her son, which may have contributed to his twisted mental state. She said both of Dahmer's parents, who divorced when he was 18, were very, very odd when he was beaten to death in prison in November 1994 at age 34. His father Lionel was particularly upset by his son's early death because he wanted Dahmer to convert people to Christianity in prison, and, he, didn't get the chance. Dahmer, who was sentenced to 16 life imprisonment terms for his crimes, would write to Ms. Glass from prison about God. He apparently contemplated whether he would go to heaven despite his sickening crimes and prayed for death every day behind bars. I did ask him are you gonna go to heaven or hell? And he said, well, that's a good question, Ms. Glass told Kyle and Jackie O. He wanted to die. He stayed up all night and he slept all day because he couldn't do his passions. So he really wanted to die. 
and he aggravated every other inmate until somebody, fellow inmate Christopher Scarver, finally killed him. Ms. Glass went on to explain that Dahmer's first murder was an accident but he then wanted to make zombies so killed others in a premeditated fashion. He injected drugs into people. He drilled holes in some and poured acid into everything he could, because he wanted to create a zombie, she said of his modus operandi. Nancy's interview comes as Netflix's monster. The Jeffrey Dahmer story has broken streaming records. Created by Ryan Murphy, the show has become Netflix's ninth most popular English-language TV series of all time, in the span of just two weeks. Monster has been viewed for 496. 1 million hours thus far, with at least 56 million households who have watched all 10 episodes of the series according to Variety. The streamer measures the popularity of their shows by counting hours viewed in the first 28 days, meaning the show still has 16 days to gain an even higher spot on the chart. Starring Evan Peters as the serial killer known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, the show has held the number one spot on the English-language TV chart since its release, and is also the second most-watched English-language series in a week ever, only beat out by season four of Stranger Things. It retells the story of Dahmer from the perspective of his victims, and explores major mistakes Wisconsin police made in handling the probe of the notorious mass murderer, who made national headlines for acts of cannibalism and necrophilia. The show features at least 10 incidents in which authorities nearly took Dahmer into custody, but didn't, extending the twisted crime spree. However, Ms. Glass said a degree of poetic license has been afforded its writers in order to bring his gruesome story to the screen. While Monster depicts Dahmer's father Lionel as a concerned dad who believed his son was an alcoholic loser, Glass said this simply wasn't true. The father never thought anything was wrong, said Glass, adding that Lionel was an odd man who perhaps wouldn't have noticed red flags in Jeffrey's behavior. So I do want to say that while the Netflix show is fantastic, it's a scripted show. It's not meant to be a documentary, she added. Glass revealed the show's storyline about Dahmer's neighbor Glenda Cleveland was also fictional. In the series, Cleveland is portrayed as Dahmer's next-door neighbor in the Oxford Apartments and has several troubling encounters with him. Cleveland makes multiple complaints to the police about a foul smell emanating from Dahmer's apartment, but her calls go ignored because she is black. In reality, Cleveland lived in a different building and never met Dahmer. That didn't happen, Glass said of Cleveland's portrayal, adding, there was a neighbor who noticed a smell, but didn't complain. Cleveland did, however, make several attempts to alert local police and the FBI about Dahmer's behavior after her niece ran into one of his victims, Connor Aksinthesum phone, trying to escape his apartment building. Glass also said the detail about Dahmer's father Lionel teaching him how to dissect animals as a child was unlikely to have happened. I'm not sure that's true, said Ms. Glass, who developed a friendship with Dahmer's parents in the 90s. In the series, Lionel and his son are seen driving around looking for roadkill to dissect in their garage. Lionel who worked as a research chemist, is seen teaching his son how to slice up the dead animals as a demented form of fatherly bonding. In reality, Lionel never taught his son about dissecting, discarding and preserving animal parts, and only found out his son performed these grotesque acts on humans after he was arrested.